All right, and we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos. The wonderful guys and gals at Basketball University at medium.com. And of course, our friends at Lakerholics.com. And the, also, one big happy, happy thank you so much for everything that they've done for us at the Hoop Heads Pod Network, the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. It is sincerely appreciated. Well, game six is in the books. And I, all I got to say is Felix Aloha. Aloha, sons, indeed. Tell you what. You hear the sound, everyone? You hear that sound? That's me and Jamie Sweet. We're patting ourselves on the back because I uh, can't say that we called it. But, oh, yeah, I can. We called it. We did call Bucks and Six. And tonight, with an epic performance by Giannis Tentacumpo, who wasn't the only individual out there besides Jeff Bezos going into space, he had a tremendous performance today, 50 points, 17 rebounds, just a tremendous performance all around. Excuse me, 50 points, 14 rebounds, 17 of 19 at the free throw line. That was totally unexpected that he would be that good. But in the clutch, the best players, they come out. And yes, he did. 50 points again, just truly a sensational performance. Four block shots, five block shots, actually. Five block shots, truly a tremendous performance by Jonas Tentacumpo. And the Milwaukee Bucks for now, are the 2021 NBA champions until the Lakers hopefully get that back, which we are all hoping here. But again, it is the Milwaukee Bucks with the victory and the series, four games to two, and Giannis Tentacumpo already being named MVP. They should already just put that in stone, put that in writing. Don't need to know anything about the voting process. If you don't make him the MVP in the series, I don't know who else you would. Uh, Middleton came up with a nice clutch performance, couple nice shots. He added a sprinkle in there. But to me, it was mostly Giannis Tentacumpo with the hearty helping of Bobby Portis with 16 points himself. But they got just enough help for Giannis Tentacumpo to go ahead and pull out the victory. Uh, just a disappointing performance by the Suns. They, after a really strong comeback in that second quarter with some outstanding defense, Better defense than they had played at any time at all in the finals, where they only held Milwaukee to 13 points in that second quarter to erase a 13-point deficit after the end of the first quarter. But the second half proved to be too much. They fell behind in the third quarter and just could not make it up. But here today to talk about the games and also the odds for next season for NBA that are already out in Vegas are two great guests indeed. First up is a man that we all know and love as the mastermind behind Lakerholics.com. It is Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, I could go on superlatives about the spirited performance by Bobby Portis. I could come up with a lot of things that were said and done with the clutch shots made by Chris Middleton. I could talk about the stifling defense at times that was made by Drew Holiday. But all in all, it's got to be about Giannis. Well, this was probably the single greatest game in Giannis's career. Um, he definitely got back at all of those people who said he didn't deserve the MVPs and the Defensive Players of the Year and and uh, failed to win in the big opportunities when he was in the bubble and so forth. So uh, you can't take anything away from Giannis. Um, you know, you, a lot of these superstars that are on other teams – I find incredibly irritating at times, but there's almost nothing you can say bad about Giannis. I mean, he's like just one of the most genuinely humble and and straight out good guys in the league. Um, so I'm happy to see him get some redemption for all of the criticisms he's taken through the years, uh, come up with what may be one of the greatest games, elimination games in the finals in the history of the league. Um, he didn't get a whole lot of help from the rest of the team. I mean, the shooting stats for for the guys other than other than Giannis are pretty disappointing. 
Um, and I think the thing which was emphasized well by the announcing crew is the guy never quit the entire game. I mean, he was he was running up and down the court, challenging every single shot. Um, congratulations to them for the win. I thought the Suns, the Suns looked fatigued. You know, they just seemed to play their hearts out, and uh, they could not deal with the physicality that that the Bucks gave them today. I mean, the defense that Milwaukee put on them um, was as physical as I've seen ever allowed in the NBA Finals. It was like an old Lakers Celtics, you know, route where he, where guys are falling down to the ground left and right, um, and and the physicality on the ball was just really impressive by the Bucks. Um, it was so loud at times I couldn't even hear Mike Breen. Yeah, or maybe it was just the way I had my stereo set up. But I think it was more <laughs> of the crowd being loud. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's one of those strange years, just like the bubble year, that that this is the the season, and you know, give the Bucks credit they took they they took advantage of it. They came back from a two zero deficit and won four straight games. So this was a you know a cyber sweep, if you will, of the Phoenix Suns, and uh, it really it really. Their their size and their physicality really dominated the game. Um, while I think Giannis was, you know, 99.9% the most valuable player in the finals, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Drew Holiday, who, I mean, I don't know who it is that can go out there and have as much impact as he did doing four for 20 in one game and four for 19 tonight. I mean, that's pretty impressive. His defense was was just stunning and and in the end, he's, you know, he's, he's the Iguodala for this team. He's the guy who made the plays on defense that really kept them in and won that game five to set them up for the elimination game tonight. But congratulations to all of the Bucs. Um, kudos to the Suns, too. They, they played great. Uh, uh, you, just, you just reach a point where their youth, uh, especially with, I think, with Booker and with uh, Aiton, started to show. Um, and, uh, you know, you just, you can't say enough about the job that they did, the, the job that, uh, Monty did in, in getting the team to go as far as they did. Um, it'll be interesting to see, and I haven't seen the most recent, uh, the most recent odds for next year to see where the Bucks and the, uh, and the Suns appear and what their odds are and where they are. I think last time when they came out with the odds, they were the, Neither one of them were in the top three, maybe not even in the top four teams. Um, but well, I, I'll give you, I'll give you the youth on the side of Aiton because he, he definitely had times where yeah. he was struggling, putting up little junk shots against Giannis yeah. that he would easily defend. He, he looked like I, I won't tonight. give it to you. I, I won't give it to you on Booker. Booker just didn't execute down the stretch. He has had well, a lot of time, and he's in his seventh year. Don't give me that that, that he's his first yeah, time. But he playoffs. hasn't played in the playoffs. This is the first time in the playoffs. He's played twenty five games Cheryl, now in the matter. playoffs. He's first played twenty five games. Twenty five games in the playoffs now. That's that's a bunch of malarkey. But anyways, it matter. Still matters. He, he he Booker. He just didn't execute down the stretch. You're right. Yeah, fatigue. I will give you because they did look fatigued. Aiden, you, you know, you just can't put up that junk like he was doing against Giannis. He was clearly intimidated by what was going on by the tall front line at times when Brooke Lopez was in there right. early in the first half. But there are other great uh, people here to talk about the game as well. And one of those is a man who you got to go ahead and check. Uh, excuse me. A man who you got to check out right now at basketball-university on medium.com, a place where I – We'll be sending my latest mock draft, mock draft 4.0 first, exclusively there first, giving them the exclusive because I got dissed by Lakerholics.com last week. So that's my retribution. I'm going to send it 4.0 there this week. In fact, I'm going to be sending it in three, two, one, sending it right now. But it is a good man indeed. You got to check out what he's doing at Basketball Dash University. It is Spencer Young and Spencer. Great to have you back once again. I mean, Tom is right when he talks about the layer of support today for Milwaukee. It wasn't there outside of Bobby Portis, who really energized the crowd with his antics, but his enthusiasm. 
you got to go, you got to take one with the other. I mean, you have uh, somebody that's very spirited, but also is going to give you a lot of energy in return. We've seen that on Golden State. We've seen that on the other championship teams. So I want to hear your thoughts on actually the individual that does deserve the best amount of praise, Giannis Antetokounmpo, because today was his defining game of his legacy. And I don't think there should be any more haters out there anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still, like, processing some of those numbers. Uh, that might have been... They're, like, playing video games. Like, we were playing 2K or something. Yeah, that might have been one of... I mean, it's an all-time great finals performance. I'm just thinking on the top of my head. I don't... I mean, like, LeBron's 51-8-8 eight and eight against the Warriors might be, like, the only comparable finals game I can remember in the past decade, really. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, he learned how to shoot free throws overnight, which was pretty surprising. But yeah, tell me about it. That was that. As, as I know, Laker Tom said it right. That was the difference. I think for today, nine points, nine points more on free throws, and you know that seventeen of those free throws came. They did twenty-five and twenty-nine from the line. Yeah, but I thought the most impressive part is the fact that um, I mean, his conditioning has been. I think kind of iffy, you know, obviously he had that press conference where he says he takes a tinkle or something. That's him being exhausted in the uh, first quarter. So his conditioning isn't 100%, but if you watch. Like Game five, you usually, you really saw it, especially yeah, that first half. He was puffing and puffing. On some of his chase down blocks, I mean, he looked like prime LeBron and you know, he's not 100% with his knee either. So I think the effort he gave was like superhuman. So, yeah, that was an amazing performance. Well, I agree with you on that. I mean, this is something that is going to define his legacy from here on out. I mean, you cannot fault if you, you're not even a Giannis fan. And I know there's a lot of haters for LeBron, haters out there for all the different star players out there. And, you know, there are several components of Giannis' game that people point to. Yeah, he can't shoot threes well. Yeah, he's, you know, if you keep him out to shooting jump shots, you're going to win the game. If you keep him doing this, you're going to win the game. If you keep on fouling him, send him to the line, you're going to win the game. Well, he put some of those myths to the bed for, for now and for tonight. But you know what? When it needed him the most, Milwaukee got the best of Giannis Antetokounmpo. And here today to talk about the game as a good man indeed, you got to go ahead and catch his thoughts every time out at Lakerholics.com. It is L. Rob, the man himself. He's back. We're in Michigan State. Spartans. Go Spartans. Actually, mine is South Torrance High Spartans, but still Spartans. Go Spartans. But my friend, great to have you back once again. And I think all we need to talk about right now is heap a whole bunch of praise on Shaughness at the Nukupo. No, I'm going to start with my Spartan alum, Bryn Forbes. How's that? Bryn, okay. get, him, get some Marine. He hasn't played in, what, four games? Well, defensively, he was such a liability that yeah, it just, yeah, it, you know, yeah. no matter how hot he can get from three, I think that was the overwhelming factor why he rode the pine. And they put Jeff Teague in, which yeah, you know, people was, were even questioning that. Yeah, that was even worse. But anyway, yes, uh, Giannis uh, was incredible. You know, um, like Spencer, Tom, and you said that you, you can't think of many performances uh, better than that in a championship round, especially for a closeout game. So um, he was he was the best player on the court from beginning to the end. And pretty much most of the series. And he was, you know, um, creating open shots for his teammates. Couldn't get many assists today because nobody else could knock down an open shot. Um, but they just physically overpowered them, beat them up on the boards. And, um, you know, it was a physical game, like Tom said. And, and, and Milwaukee fed off the crowd. And, yeah, Giannis got a few uh, favorable whistles. But that's what happens when you're in a constant, constant attack mode. And um, well, you know, you know, Phoenix, all of Phoenix now is going to say the reason why we lost is because of Scott Foster. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's 12 playoff performances in a row, 12 playoff games in a row for CP3. <clears throat> He's lost with Scott Foster as a ref. Yeah. Coincidence, throw out, uh, it's not because Booker shot eight for 22 or no, or no, it can't be because of that. Eight was three for 10, and can't be because of that. Any of that, it's uh, it's gotta be Scott Foster. Scott Foster, yeah. Um, you know, that's that's a psychological hurdle they got to overcome. They can't, um, uh, you seen Chris Paul talking to him before the game, and I don't think I don't think CP3 will bring that up. Uh, 
I think he'll probably, if anything, he'll probably say something complimentary uh, about him. Uh, but at any rate, he played a good game. He, I, I, I like seeing him go go out, you know, shooting the ball and having a decent game because I really don't want to see people dump on him. I mean, he's taken enough heat in his career. I felt he, you know, for to play at 36 years old at, at his age and to have uh, one of the best defensive guards in the league defending you most of the game, uh, he acquitted himself well. Just needed some help from Booker and uh, Aiton today, and neither one of those guys showed up. Um, Bridges looked like he exhausted himself um, defending Holiday. He didn't have much on the offensive end. And um, one of the few times you can question something uh, Monty Williams did, I thought he probably should have went back to um, campaign. He was one of the guys that was really um, – had a good feel for the game, it seemed, offensively. And I was surprised he didn't kind of give him a little bit more of a look in the second half. But, I mean, bottom line, they were down, you know, it's a tie game with – or, or a two-point game with six, seven minutes to go. So they were right there. Um, Milwaukee just made the big plays. Um, I don't think Giannis was going to be denied. That's what you want to see from your great players. That's what you want to see from from all-time greats. That's what you want to see from MVPs. Guys were saying he couldn't close games and he needed Middleton to do this. Like, other greats didn't need a, a great teammate to, to, to help them out. But um, in the fourth quarter, when it was winning time, he made a you know, ton of big plays and he was not going to let the Bucks lose this one. So tip your cat to cat. Tip your cap to Giannis. I'm very happy for him and excited to see what the future holds for him at 26 and his game is still growing. Well, Ronnie, great com uh, conversations out there on the chat board. Just want to tell you, we're all joking when we think Scott Foster was reason. There was no real calls, L. Rob, I think at this point, that really decided this game. So I think Scott Foster gets a pass on this occasion. I even think that, like you said, uh, there was outside of one clutch shot by Chris Middleton, you know, something we've seen seen differently because where he's so relied upon in the fourth quarter, this was all about Giannis. This was all about Giannis taking over and taking control. Absolutely, from beginning to end. And give Booker's credit. He played very good defense on Middleton. Um, you know, he looked like he got away with a lot of grabbing and holding, but uh, nevertheless, he made it difficult for Middleton to get the ball, and he didn't give him a whole lot of space and didn't let him get a whole, uh, up a whole lot of shots. So. Um, I think he deserves some credit for his defense. Absolutely. Absolutely, indeed. But Laker, Tom, I mean, when it comes down to it, four games to two, Phoenix, unfortunately, goes home a loser on this one. Is there something that they can do to build upon this? I know we talked about before Chris Paul may now that he didn't win start looking a little bit more in the distance toward other teams. Jordan Maybe like boat. you've been talking about. Yeah, he wants to get on that banana boat that you keep on talking about, do the reuni reunification mm -hmm. with Melo and LeBron for the Lakers. We talk about all that, but what can Phoenix do to build upon this? Because you talk about how they say they didn't have enough experience, they were too young, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now they have that experience. Now they have 25 playoff games under their belt. Now they have one NBA finals under their belt. Uh, to me, I just don't think it's an issue anymore going forward. But I also think that there's going to be issues standing in the way, salary cap or uh, other reasons why that they may not be able to make it back to the NBA Finals. Well, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to get back. Um, I also think it's going to be difficult for Milwaukee to get back. Uh, Milwaukee probably has a better chance just because of the, the size that they have and, and the way that they play defense. Um, the Suns got some big decisions. You know, it'll start with what Chris Paul does. Is, is Chris Paul going to to opt into his player option and, and uh, take that last $44 million salary for next year? Um, it's kind of interesting thought is that uh, the Lakers are looking for somebody who's as good as Lowry or as good as Lonzo, but won't hard cap them. Uh, if Chris Paul were to opt in, he could be traded and uh, it would not, you know, the team that traded for him wouldn't be signing, wouldn't, wouldn't be hard capped as a result. So you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I think that we're going to see all sorts of, of banana boat options coming along. Um, and there also probably are going to be some questions about 
when you're a 36 year old player and you came down to the last two or three games and you weren't as great as you might have been, um, it's the same type of questions that LeBron has gotten the last, you know, this year when he had his injuries and so forth. And that is whether or not age is starting to catch up with Chris. Um, again, you know, he had at a real critical point tonight. He lost the ball again. Yeah. Just dribbling, just dribbling the ball with his right hand. He lost it. And that was a, that was a four point game at that point in time. And that's what started the route to turn it around to an eight point game that, that ended up like that. So very good point. You, you know, do the, how do, how do the Suns get better? That's the big question because they're going to, they're going to face teams, you know, hopefully without the injury that we suffered this year because of the, the confessed schedule and so forth. Um, they're going to have to fight their way back up. Um, they had a great regular season. Aiton really showed that he can be a bigger force in the playoffs than he had shown during the regular season. So that's a big plus. Uh, you know, they've, they've got some free agency issues. Cam campaign is a free agent. Um, and there might be some amazing offers for him. You know, he's a, uh, he had the one game where he scored 27 points and he's, he's definitely, he's got a quickness that he reminds me a lot of the Dennis Schroeder going to the basket. And he's got that extra, he's got that second gear and then that quick ability to put the ball up off of the, off of the rim. Uh, somebody's going to pay him, you know? And so it'll be interesting to see Robert Sarver, the owner of the Suns has never paid luxury taxes in history. So there's a question about, you know, the Suns have, the Suns have a team that's good enough now. With I mean, Aiton is going to be coming up for a max, uh, and and you know they're going to have some tough decisions to make. And and are they are they going to be among the top three teams in the West next year? I mean, they're probably a top four team in the West, but probably not a top two team. Um, not unless there's a lot of injuries again. So it'll be an it'll be an interesting challenge. Uh, James Jones has done a terrific job building yeah. that building that franchise. Remember the days when he first started as, as yeah. the exec when they thought he was just LeBron's friend and they LeBron's was shutting friend. Every, another one of yeah. LeBron's friends who just got the job just because they were LeBron's friends. Yeah, ignoring ignoring the simple fact of all of the great things that they've done on their own, totally, completely isolated away from LeBron James. But uh, you know, if you're a Phoenix fan, you're disappointed because. You could have won the series. Um, you probably weren't the best team, but you still could have won the series with some great play at key times. But on the other hand, um, you made the finals. You had a chance for your first championship. Uh, that's got to be something really to build on. There's got to be a level of confidence among the team. Um, they they need a little more flexibility. They need some size. You know, um, they really got worn down at the end because they really couldn't compete in the size. Remember, and, their backup center got hurt two yeah, minutes into the first game. Right. Um, although, although um, Kaminsky. Kaminsky played, Frank played really well. Uh, I thought it was a good move to put him back in because Aiton obviously wasn't. wasn't Are you really, really going to count on Kaminsky, though, over a seven-game no, series? But, uh, they're not going to count on Saric either. You know, I mean, yeah. they, they need some more physicality. Um they also probably need they need somebody like Drew Holiday to shut down the other team's top scorers. You know, yeah. Holiday had a Holiday for a guy who shot horribly <laughs> a couple of those games, and in, in the middle he had that great game. But his defense is, I mean, uh, I, I have absolutely no complaints about him being labeled, him being chosen first team All NBA defense. I mean, you, you thought Miles Bridges could be there, but if he can, it's not yet. He, Miles yeah. Bridges is no, still, he's, still has a ways to go. He's still young. Cam Johnson's still young. I mean, they've got a team that basically still is probably three years away from being the team that they really could be. You know, when you get to a point where where Booker's had three or four playoff runs, you know, and, and he's really developed some confidence and he's had – Let's say he's had his game like Giannis has had his game. Um, the other thing is for Milwaukee, uh, this is going to elevate them in in when you look at the competition in the Eastern Conference because uh, Bud's still got his job, Giannis has got a ring, and the East is going to be looking a lot different next year. 
You Absolutely. Know? So I, I want to hear, I want all those arguments about how the East is the least and right. the East can't do it. That needs to go away. And that's something we'll talk about with the odds coming up here in a minute. But I want to get Spencer and L Rob one last time on the finals if they have any last thoughts. Spencer, you're up next, my friend, with some parting thoughts on this series, this finals, and Phoenix and Milwaukee. Anything you want to talk about amongst all this stuff that's going on going forward? Um, well, you know, I thought before the playoffs, I thought Milwaukee had a lot of, like, finals potential. But, you know, they're, I mean, they were one of the most frustrating teams, and they kind of embodied, like, Chris Middleton being a really frustrating scorer. But... And they've been in like a shooting slump for two months now. A lot of their players are just underperforming on jump shots. So I think they could reasonably do better next year. Obviously, it'll be more competitive. As far as Phoenix, I think they're going to run into issues because Aiden's obviously not coming cheap anymore. I mean, it's just like a function of the salary cap. He's getting a max regardless of if you think that's like his actual word uh you're gonna pay mikhail bridges you you have like role players making around nine million to, and you're gonna extend chris paul possibly at like three years 33. So. kane's making two million you're gonna have a big raise for him not anymore <laughs> and cam johnson will eventually need a contract extension so you know i agreed with what laker tom said they needed as a roster but you're not getting that I mean, you're going to have to, like, swing a trade because a Drew Holiday-type defender, you just have to hope Mikhail Bridges develops, and you're going to be paying him, like, big money, too, because he's a 3 D wing. So, yeah, I mean, the outlook is optimistic, but I don't know how high their chance Small market are. optimistic. Yes, but the small market team won with Milwaukee. So, L. Rob. Well, they – couldn't lose the small market had both teams in the final. I understand you know? it, but getting there with two small market teams, that argument that these small market teams have, they just go out the window with a series like this. I don't yeah, we, even injuries aside. Inj yeah, injuries aside and all that, they still they did what it took to get there to the finals. And I don't want to hear any more of these arguments about how small t market teams just cannot compete because you know what like with even with the Lakers last year, if something goes right for you. And you get the right breaks and you stay healthy. Look what happened there. Same thing with Milwaukee. They stayed healthy. Look what happened there as well. But L Rob, before we head on to our last topic of the day, and that's the odds for the NBA championship, want to go ahead and mention to you that it just and everybody else out there that again, this is I think their first championship since the early 1970s. Is it 1971 or 74? 71. 71. Green. I was I was still in diapers then, so that's scary. That tells you how long ago it was. But my friend, yes, with Kareem, yes, no doubt, no doubt about that. Before Oscar. Yeah, yeah. Oscar. yes, Oscar and Kareem, that great team. And then, of course, he was traded to the Lakers a few years later. But L. Rob, I want to go ahead and you know go ahead and close out your thoughts on what the futures are like for these teams or the series as a whole. Anything you want to go ahead and discuss on the finals and the Phoenix Suns and even the Milwaukee Bucks, the NBA champions. So, yeah, 1971, they beat the they beat Baltimore. I think they were in Baltimore then. Earl Monroe um, got uh, – that was a good Bullets team with Earl Monroe and Wes Unsell and Gus Johnson. That's and what you know, 50 years later almost, to, yep, uh, yep. his son uh, takes over. Let's not forget about Bobby D, who just recently got in the hall, what, a couple years yeah. ago, Bobby Dandridge. So yes. that, that was a really good Milwaukee team. They won it in the second year in, in franchise history of being in the league. So I'm sure they thought it was going to be, you know, many more to come. Little yep. thing. God, next year, coming up next year. <laughs> was it for 50 years later. So, yes, uh, it's just it's, it's I'm happy for Milwaukee and uh, the city. I'm happy for Giannis and uh I've been a very critical of Coach Bud, uh, but you I mean, and everybody else. Yeah, but he, he got it done. So at the end of the day, you got to tip your you tip tip your hat to him, and he's a championship coach, so you can never take that away from him. So absolutely, just like Frank Vogel is funny because he wins the championship, and we're on his case less than a year later. Oh yeah, yeah. I think the first game of the next season. Fans exactly. What is he doing? What is he doing? I think Jamie was on him during the exhibition season. But yes, go ahead. My so friend. I think uh, Phoenix big 
growth opportunity can come from uh, Cam Johnson. He he's he showed himself very well, and he's got a a huge growth potential. Um, of course, Bridges is um, you know young. He's got to learn how to put the ball on the floor and be more than just a, a you know a three and D guy. Because the one time he did it, he was successful. Yeah, he's got. He's just got to get more confidence. He's got. He's got enough skill to do more off the bounce than he's shown. Yeah. Um, Aiden certainly has room to grow. So I'm hoping Chris Paul goes back there and let them roll the dice again and, and see what they can do. I want I want the West to be as strong as possible. I want Phoenix to be strong. I want the Clippers to get their team back. I want the Lakers and Anthony Davis to be healthy. I mean, I can picture Anthony Davis and um, Giannis having some battles. Now, that would have been something because that's the one thing with Giannis. It's like, well, you don't have to, you don't have to defend anybody. You know, I mean, as great as he was, he got a chance to pretty much rest on defense. He didn't have to worry about his man attacking him. So if they was playing the Lakers, he'd probably be matched up against AD a lot. And uh, that would have been a fun matchup to to watch. So maybe we can we can dream about that for next year. Uh, or it could have been drumming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now, don't be a... <laughs> You Sorry, know, um, don't be a killjoy here. We, <laughs> we're enjoying this uh, last game. We, you know, I always like to see teams from the East. I don't want no team in the West getting more confidence and winning the championship and coming back next year with a little more confidence. I let I prefer to see more Eastern teams get get the confidence and and uh, make that conference even tougher um, to come out of. So next year, yeah, Milwaukee's going to be. I mean, people can say they're one and done. Um, their chemistry, and they can add a piece, and then you got to figure out when the buyout market comes around, they'll be an attractive team to look at. They'll, they'll, you know, they picked up um, PJ Tucker this year. Who knows? They may pick up some somebody next year. Um, a year playing together with with Drew and and Middleton and Giannis, they can only get better. So I mean, they played the whole, you know, most of the playoffs without uh, DiVincenzo. So you get him back. Um, you know, I'm not going to sleep on the Bucks. They, I like their team. Ronnie had some good suggestions, uh, talking about numerous teams are going to come back healthy and retool. And we'll talk about that coming up right now. Once again, this is the Lakers fast break. Truly. Thank you for watching and listening. Everyone out there. Thank you so much for the thousands of thousands of plays that have downloads that have take, taken place that you've done. That, that people have listened to our show on the, uh, you know, well over a hundred, I think at 50 episodes that we've done over the course of the past season, the tons and tons of downloads that we've got it's in the tens of thousands. Now we truly appreciate it. Cannot thank you enough for doing so over the course of the past few months, this whole season has been great to follow with you through the ups and downs. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it was a down for us here as Lakers fans, but we're looking up. At least we are as far as the odds are concerned because as we come back from the break here and we're talking more here at the Lakers Fast Break, the odds are now up for 2022, the NBA championship. And lo and behold, here in Vegas, Brooklyn is still on top, obviously with the three players that they got, the superstars, they get all the headlines. So they are at a plus 250 right now, but close behind at a plus 650 in second place. And hopefully that's not just because people from L.A. spiking up the odds, as I've told you about. Los Angeles Lakers at a plus 650. Then you have Milwaukee coming in at third place, plus 800. Then you have Golden State. They're assuming that in Vegas that they're going to make a trade with all the assets that they have. They're at a plus 900 right now. Then you have Phoenix also at a plus 900. I would say the Golden State Warriors are going to make the trades and they're going to look a little bit better than Phoenix, but that's just me. Then you have Utah at a plus 1,100, Philadelphia at plus 1,200, the Clippers at plus 1,400. I think they should be a little bit down farther, but then again, I'm assuming that they're expecting Kawhi back for the playoffs right around 2022. This, so right around April of 2022, they're thinking that might happen after he comes back from his partial ACL tear. Then you have Miami at a plus 2,000, Denver at a plus 3,000, Atlanta at a plus 3,300. That was kind of weird how they're now down below Miami. They're assuming, I guess, Pat Riley to work some type of magic. 
Dallas at a plus 3,300. That's also surprising that Luca isn't actually any higher. Maybe that's a sign that Jason Kidd is coaching. And then you have the Boston Celtics, Tom's second favorite team. I'm kidding. At plus 4,000. Portland, Rafael Barlow's favorite team. Our good friend out there, he's plus 5,000 right there for Portland. Then you have the Knicks at plus 6,000 and Memphis at plus 8,000. And then it goes down from there. New Orleans at plus 8,000. Toronto plus 8,000. Washington at plus 8,000 and so on. Guys, I sent you the link in your email that if you want to take a look at it, that's through, that's courtesy of points bet that's out there. But I want to hear your thoughts on this. Obviously, Bra- Brooklyn gets all the headlines with the three superstars. And Laker Tom has enunciated this on several occasions that the Lakers must get a third superstar. But I think a lot of these odds are su- subjective to what Vegas thinks that these teams are going to do. That's why Golden State is so high. But Spencer, I think I'm going to start with you. When it comes to the odds on in Las Vegas here right now, and that's pretty much what we're seeing across the board at most of the other locations here, whether it's online or offline, Vegas Insider, or any of the hotels and casinos here, that's pretty much what I've seen across the board. But I want to hear your thoughts on Brooklyn and Lakers being the top one, too, right now in Vegas? I mean, you know, it, I, it's the past two years, like, if you if you go based off the past two years, it's pretty hard to pick favorites. But from a talent standpoint, it's obvious that the Nets have, you know, the most talent, superstar talent, I guess I should add. And um, the Lakers, like, you know, they'd lost in the first round, but there are times where they look like a championship team. And, you know, Phoenix, I, I think plus 900. I would, I agree with you that Golden State should have better odds. I wouldn't put Utah over the Sixers because the Sixers, I think, will trade Ben Simmons for an I think Utah is going to make some changes or do a little bit of tinkering. And maybe it's going to be a situation where it's over tinkering. I think it's a situation like what we saw a few years ago with Atlanta when they won 60 games and they had four all-stars and they just couldn't get it done in the playoffs. They did some tinkering that never, they never recaptured that until this past season as far as where they could go as a team. Yeah. um, But yeah, I I would, I would personally still put the Nets and Lakers as the favorites. I think. I I think that's pretty much agreed upon Laker, Tom, L Rob, same thing, uh, you know, you don't see any surprises there, at least among the first two, correct? No, actually, I think that, you know, you see all of the time that you have these, everybody comes out with their power rankings. Um, and frankly, the listing that you just gave of the odds in Vegas, to me, look pretty accurate as far as what I would, if I were ranking the teams, I'd probably be ranking them very close to that list that you just made. Um, I think that the Nets are clearly the favorite, assuming that everybody's healthy and so forth. Um, and I mean, you expect them to to get the benefits that a front runner does with respect to free agents who minimum wage free agents who want to sign. I think the Lakers are right behind them. Um, I think that they're in a tier all by themselves. Um, and then I think the next tier probably is the the Milwaukee. Uh, Bucks are probably the third best team in the league, and I, I would probably uh, agree that the fourth and fifth teams were the same as it, you were saying. I, I think I do think that uh, um, the Golden State. I don't know. I, the, I mean, Warriors, the Warriors have so many assets, and, and yeah. there's no way you're not going to have them be a top four team. And I do but think there's a level they, of uncertainty though, isn't there with Thompson and how good can he be? Marks. Too many question marks for a golden state. Yeah, yeah like but this. they also have too many, so many, they also assets, have too many different so many options because they've got some high draft picks and they've got a lot of picks that they could trade. They've got a couple of players like Wiseman and, uh, and the kid from Minnesota, they got from Minnesota that are definitely Wiggins, Wiggins that are definitely very valuable trade assets for people. Um, Wiggins, especially his defense has improved dramatically. Um, so I, I think the Warriors are clearly, you know, I think that next tier is basically Milwaukee, Milwaukee, the Warriors and the Suns. Um, I think that yeah, finishes I, out the top five. Uh, and I probably agree with, with Spencer that I think Philadelphia probably is going to be above, uh, the jazz. 
Um, I just think that makes sense. You know, it's, hey, man, these people put money up, you know? Yeah. I don't you know. You put money up, it sometimes has a lot of good reasons for going in the right places, you know? L. Rob, you don't seem sold on the Warriors. I mean, there's I mean, a lot of questions, thing. and then yeah. there's a lot of assets. It's like Here, a, uh, yeah. Here's the Go thing. State. Everyone talks about how improved Wiggins was. And, and other and, and some say Steph Curry should have won the MVP. And Draymond's this great glue guy. You can't make it to the playoffs? If these guys are that good, you can't even make it to the playoffs? So, yes. Yeah, well, their, their defense disappeared. You know, they used to be yeah. a great defensive team. That's why they won more than yeah. their offense. I mean, I know they had a ton of injuries with Clay out and, and Wiseman went down. Um, but, yeah, I mean – they have they have some some opp opportunity to really get really good, but I could not move them ahead of Phoenix, a team that has proven and has just went to the championship based upon maybes and if we. I mean, how how good is Clay going to be coming back? I mean, that's the uncertainty. Yeah. Um, are they going to pull the trigger and, and move Wiseman? Uh, I mean, if they don't make a big trade, then they definitely aren't um, in that top tier. Yeah, they've lost. They've lost a lot of continuity, um, and their defensive, their whole defensive philosophy seems to have disappeared. There have been turnovers with the starting lineup. There have been turnovers in the coaching staff. Um, and the thing that strikes me about them, I, I watched. I live in Northern California, so I watch the Warriors a lot. Um, they just don't have. It's not the same team at all. You know that's that's why you can't say that they're going to go in the playoffs because they got Steph in there and then, and they got Draymond, but he's not shooting threes anymore. And then everything else on that team is, is dramatically down. You know, they don't have the Iguodala's. They don't have the, the guys that they used to have that, that really made them tough. Sean um, Livingston's not coming through that door. No, you know, he was a very valuable player for them, you know? Yes, he was. Um, and and so what you have, you have no continuity and you don't even have a, five players that really fit together because they just they they jumped on that they jumped on the D'Angelo Russell sign and trade you know because they just wanted to have the asset they didn't want to let they didn't want to let Durant walk for nothing so they got that asset but in the process of that asset it screwed up the whole team and then then they drafted Wiseman you know which is you know a, a, Wiseman uh his a center his project for a team that is competing right now, you know, yeah. is not really the, you know. But they I could throw, throw him out, package yeah. the two lottery picks that they have and get someone special, which I think is what Vegas is counting on. When they're, yeah. when you're considered Golden State that high, they are considering and are assuming that Golden State is going to push the trigger or pull the trigger. Well, they got I don't say, like a, a I'm going to say like a Lillard type. I'm not saying Damian Lillard. Personally, no although that that could be talked about, but a Damian yeah. Lillard like level star that they can get with those assets. That's probably what I'm saying. That's why that they're, they're in that range. Well, ne next, you know, ne next to Philadelphia, there's probably no team that has a front office that's more prone to making trades than the Warriors. You know, they're they're going they're going to they're thinking big, just like the Lakers are every yeah. time. Yeah. Well, they have to because their window is closing, just yeah. like the Lakers. Yep. Yep. But L, L. Rob, any team surprise you on their odds? I mean, for me, Miami. Dallas. Even though Jason Kidd is in there with Luca, those are some pretty long odds right now for Dallas. Hint, yeah, hint anyone out there? Uh, right in turmoil, though. Denver is. Uh, yeah, you're right. Denver is undervalued. I mean, you know, I mean, you figure with with just with Murray and Joker there, you know, they're top four team in the West, so they got a lot of people over them. How what, what were their odds? Denver's again? Uh, they're all in the three plus three thousand. Plus three thousand. I mean, think, about, think about the difference between two by a plus two fifty and a plus three thousand. Yeah, I mean, so if, if somebody I mean, is really high on the Denver Nuggets right now, spend <laughs> the money now on Denver. There how you go. People, how, well, how about how about Raphael? Raphael's got five thousand to what? Five thousand plus five. Yeah, 000. well, that's that's a. Uh, I think he, he put has, all his money on his favorite team. Well, if you listen to him on the Chad Ford podcast today, which dropped today, I want to give them a cheap plug. Uh, he had stated that there's some work to do, and you know that yeah. he, they're going to have to think about possibly trading Lillard 
And if that's the case, there's going to be a retooling in place. You're never going to get the like yeah. assets for Lillard that you want. It's like with any of these stars, you're right. never going to get a deal that's commensurate to the actual star himself. But, you know, because for the Lakers, the AD trade has already paid off. And that's something I want to clarify right now. The AD trade is already winner for the Lakers because they already won. Yeah. Everything else that they do now beyond is a, what AD does, it's just gravy. It's just icing on the cake because the AD already brought you the trophy one. Now, obviously, you would like to see multiple trophies. But, you know, the, the acquisition of getting LeBron and putting the money there and putting and trading and all those assets for AD – you did it for a championship, and you got the championship. Now you have to see what you can do to build upon that going forward. But Spencer, is there any odds, you know, surprising out you? I know you can't gamble yet, and this is only for <laughs> entertainment purposes. And I have to clarify that that's out there, you know. So I'm not encouraging the youth of today to go ahead and gamble. Although I do live in Vegas, and when you do come and gamble, it's greatly appreciated by the community here in Clark County. But I ask you, my friend, is there anybody that sticks out as far as a team is concerned? If you were theoretically interested in that possibility of spending money. But for entertainment purposes only. Um, I think I have to agree with L. Rob that Denver, I mean, look, Jamal Murray tore his ACL, so a lot's up in the air. But immediately after they traded for Aaron Gordon, they looked like, you know, one of the two or three best teams in the league. So, you know, plus, was it 3,000? I think that's. I, I mean, I'm not spending money on it, but <laughs> pretty good value. Um, Nor can you, my friend. Not yet, anyways. I think Miami's, um, you know, unless they get like... And I don't want to know from your parents saying, hey, are you enticing my kid to gamble? Because I'm not. I'm not. I think Miami from, from like, unless they get Kyle Lowry or someone else, or like Tyler Hero's trade value is higher than I think it is. I don't think plus 2,000 is great. Uh, are you high on Tyler Hero still? I think, you know, there's a situation to me where they should have traded him while it was really good, while he was on that high after the finals. Well, he, or, he or THT should be, should, be in a, should be in a Raptors uniform right now. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting. So, you know, after the bubble, everyone, they were the feel-good story, obviously. Right. There was a point in time where, Tyler Hero is getting compared to, I don't know, like, you know, name of Devin Booker, okay, <laughs> which is outlandish. Uh, you know, Duncan Robinson's getting crazy lofty comparisons. Precious Achua, their lottery pick, he was unplayable this season, but he was getting comparisons to Bam when he was just drafted. So I think, like, the entire NBA was in this bubble of overvaluing the Heat's assets. They just didn't do anything about it, which is, you know, problematic for them. But that's the thing. Vegas is counting on Pat Riley to work some magic because you see their odds there. They somehow have a higher odds than Denver, they got Atlanta, cap space. Dallas. Carol, and, they have cap space. That's the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. They have that's, $20 million dollars in cap space. They, have, yeah. they could. They used to have like enough cap space to sign Giannis outright. But Bam Adebayo took his extension. That's what they were banking on right. for this year. And that got it all right. One thing I want to ask you, Tom, the, actually the odds right now for the Clippers are plus 1,400. Too, mu too much? I mean, is that is that something that you think is about right? Do you think they should be longer odds or maybe shorter odds? Because, again, Kawhi's going to be out, and I'm not expecting the Clippers to go ahead and be a top four seed in the West, but maybe some of that could be very scary going into the playoffs if Kawhi decides to come back. You know, I – I don't know what's going to happen with the Clippers because they seem to be – they've got a tough situation because they had a couple of guys come through for them that they're going to have a hard time keeping, you know. Jackson. I, I don't Jackson. see how they keep – I don't see how – I mean, I don't think Reggie's – I think Reggie's earned more than the MLE already. Exactly. Based on how he, how he played. Um, and they still don't know for sure that Kawhi is coming back because Kawhi is one of the hardest people to try to predict what he's going to do. Nobody knows. Absolutely Nobody no knows. one knows. I mean, he could – he could. I could see him going to the Knicks or something. That's true. Um, he could, he could, he could decline love, the player option. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see the – I'd love to see the Clippers owner's face if that happened. That would 
uh, that would be something to that would be a pleasure that I would really enjoy. Um, then well, there's you the question: about, Steve Will Ballmer he come back? Is a come very back active all? owner. I mean, you're all, you, you're, I'm just saying, Steve Ballmer, as an owner, you, you know, I understand he's annoying to some people at times, but he is involved, he is active, and he's at least he's spending money in the Clippers like they've never had before yeah, that organization. Yeah. And at least he's not the racist like the previous Clippers owner. Yeah, that guy's but, a well, but I won't say it here on camera. Right. But but still, when you come down to it. The but Clippers, I'd love to say what the Clippers are in a strange situation because Kawhi might not resign. Kawhi might not be available the entire year, and um, and in in a certain sense, there's something that's nagging me about Paul George, about this possibly being Paul George's team and not Kawhi Leonard's team. I just somehow have a feeling that Leonard may not be there for the Clippers next year. Now, Rob, do you have any thoughts on the Clippers right now? Because are they – I mean, we talked about Dallas being a team in disarray as far as from the hierarchy standpoint, but I still think when you have a player like Luka, you shouldn't make their odds that far out. I still think you should give them a better shot. I mean, last year he was the, the runaway choice to be the MVP before the season started. So I want to ask you this on the Clippers. Right now they're still sitting at a plus 1,400, which is – Right there, around uh, eighth or ninth, and right now in the west, in the actual whole NBA. So I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, a little bit high or a little bit low? Uh, I think it's just about right with the uncertainty of Kawhi. I mean, we all assuming Kawhi will come back, but then we got no, not all of us are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they are, but I mean, then it's the injury part. So that's you know that's the one thing that Kawhi. You think, he, you think there's any possibility he might do a Kevin Durant? You know, he gets hurt. But he managed to go ahead and communicate, and he's able to go ahead and sign a lucrative deal nonetheless. Well, he's going to get a match no matter what. That would be, boy, that would be a gut punch. I would uh, welcome it, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen. No, I, don't, I think it's a very slim chance that he actually leaves the Clippers. That, you know, he's a strange guy. So, you know, you never know what Kawhi is thinking. So, but. Um, I just, I mean, he's the L.A. guy, right? He wanted to come back. He wanted to come to L.A. Yeah, so why would he leave now? Well, it's the Clippers, actually, the, Clippers would... the Lakers, or or the women's basketball well, let's, team, let's get this. Let's get this out of the, He lives in San Diego, and he helicopters yeah. to the game. So if the Clippers ever decide to move back to San Diego, that would be the perfect spot for him. Actually, I've spent so much That's time. That's a good idea. Diego. That's a good I, idea. We should San Diego is, you know what? Expensive place to live, but very cool place to live. I'll, I can't disagree with him there, but it'd be so funny if he picks up the year contract and nobody knows what he's going to be healthy or not. And just about a week before the playoffs, he just shows up to the, you know, shows up and says to the coach, Hey, I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready, ready to play. Man. <laughs> that would be, that would be total Kawhi right there for you. That would be total Kawhi. But you know, those odds that are out there again by our uh, friends at points bet. You got to go ahead and take a look at what they've got as far as odds out there. Those are the odds that are similar in Vegas that are playing out right now. We don't see anything too wild, and I agree with you out there. But last thing, Spencer, I want to go ahead and hit you up on this. Milwaukee is right now a plus 800. They're the NBA champions. They're in third place right now as far as odds are concerned for next year. Is that uh, really where the, you would put them as well? I mean – like, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They have less uncertainty than Golden State does because they're not – there really isn't many, like, pending transactions. Don't try to keep Portis. Don't try to keep Tucker. But, I mean, they're all about retaining assets. They're paying three max guys. So, I, I mean, yeah, they just won the NBA championship. I don't, I don't see a problem with it. They redeemed themselves. I think they moved themselves up two or three notches. Yeah, as a result of winning, yeah, deservedly so. I agree with you guys on that. I think that's I mean, at the start uh, of the series. I wouldn't have made them number three, but they are now in my book. Clear, clearly, and, the and team. people got to remember Philadelphia actually won the Eastern Conference as right. far as in the regular season is concerned. So them being down as far as they are is seemingly a sign to me that there's going to be issues down the road with Ben Simmons that they may either, yeah. if they keep him, they're going to have bigger problems or even if they trade him away, they're not going to find what they're looking for as a replacement. So it tells me that they don't have in Vegas enough faith in the 76ers as of yet. 
So that to me was a little surprising, but overall, I think these odds are pretty fair. Mm -hmm. Again, the plus 3000s, I would take a second look at them in that area for Denver, Atlanta, Dallas, uh, Laker Tom, before we head on out, Atlanta, which was such a surprise team. Do you think that this year's run is the highest they're going to go for a while? Do you think with Trey Young, they've got a bigger, even they've got an even bigger future up ahead for them? Um, I think that they're a team that's still on the come. I, I still think that they have room to grow uh, because of Spoken how young like a true Las Vegas gambler there because of how because of how young the, they could easily be. They could easily have been this year's sons. You know, yeah. they were that close. They were they're that close. Same, same type of team. The stars are really in their first playoffs, uh, and they just had to. You know, I mean, it's they played the they the Bucks took care of both of those upstart teams, hmm. and in both sort of the same fashion. You know that. Let's, it reminded me of the Lakers. You get a couple of games in there, and then they became unbeatable. They just swept through there, and and it was like, I mean, really, Giannis was like playing against boys. Let's be honest. Well, also because of the fact I didn't like the their defense against Giannis the whole time. You know how some teams, some of these teams, they build walls, actual walls, and just devote themselves right. to building a wall. I did not see much of that put up by Phoenix. It was more like, okay, DeAndre, I'm going to put you on an island with Giannis Island and you well, go for it. They built, and, they built walls, but the problem was is that that when they built those walls, they left guys open in the corner and guys in the in the dunker spot. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's, you was, can't. But you can't Giannis was still able to easily, you know, penetrate around. I mean, look how many times there was a pass made to a player directly underneath the basket. I mean, and they made tough shots. You know, those were not easy shots that that a lot of the Bucks were putting up underneath the basket. There were tough shots by four or five different guys at various times, right underneath. Yeah. And offensive rebounds. You know, I mean, the Bucks won the fifty fifty balls today consistently. You know, and and that's and then, and it all comes down to I think like everybody was saying at the start, the physicality. I mean. Uh, Scott Foster's crew let them play, man, and they really let them play. I mean, that's as, as physical a phys that's as physical a finals game I've ever seen. Uh, I would say that the Lakers Celtics, uh, you know, well in, in the modern days, era, you know, in the yeah, modern era, and even the Lakers Celtics, when, when even the Lakers Celtics of 2010, I would say that was a little bit more physical. That because yeah. that yeah. that was an ugly seven. Well, that was an ugly, seven. Yeah, I mean, Kobe's performance was ugly, but you know, but he got rebounds and did other things. Yeah, I mean, but I'm talking about the physicality too. I mean, they yeah. were beating. Gasol could have filed charges after yeah, that. They were in the three point era, and yeah. Yeah. these two teams got twelve total three twelve total three pointers in the elimination game. Yeah. They each shot six of them. Each game, and this. You don't expect this kind of physicality in the three-point era, you know? Well, I just thought Phoenix's defense failed them. At, you know, after they looked so good in the second quarter, their defense well, just it, failed them at times as it well. It failed them against only one guy, though. Pretty much. <laughs> well, Middleton, too. They weren't great on Middleton at times during the series. Right, but I, I don't know. The odds might have improved, but I, I remember hearing the shooting stats for early in the game or, let's say, in the third at the end of the third quarter, and it was – it was like Giannis was doing terrific, and everybody else on the team was shooting terrible. You know, well, it's, it's like with game even, six, though. Know, I mean, it's like with game five, though, when they were shot 50, 60, and 90. Well, listen, and I mean, well, the two games were total difference. Game five, both teams were red hot and just smoking. Yeah. And then and the ball was going down, and, 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 and the game was easily played. You know, it was just mega shot after mega shot. You know, tonight it was like, Stop after stop after stop, you know, and and turnover after turnover, after turnover, after turnover. Yes, yeah. I agree with yeah, Dick Rob on that. Yeah, very yeah. sloppy, that, especially sloppy. that that beginning of the game. That was. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's funny. Chris Paul sort of lost. He he lost contact with the ball so many times in the last. It must be something games. wrong with his hand. Something wrong with his hand or something because 
he would actually go to dribble and the ball would just, just blurt off in yeah. other direction. He made that really. crucial mistake with about, what was it, about two, three minutes to go? Yeah, four-point yeah. game yeah. And, and just changing directions. And yeah, was, he went this way and the ball went that way. But credit the Bucks. I'm telling you right yeah. now, Giannis, with the just a performance of a lifetime, it came up at the right moment for that team, and they are the victors, 105 to 98. They win the series in six games. I wonder who had that call. <laughs> and the best, the best acquisition, the best free agency or trade acquisition, the offseason move, in retrospect, may be the Bucks getting Drew Holiday. Oh, it is right now. Absolutely. Yeah. That's proven to be a winner. You know, despite his shooting What's the woes. Big difference between this team and the last two teams. Yeah, despite yeah, his shooting woes, it, man. He he played the lockdown defense that was necessary yeah. for them to win. But guys, again, a great victory. Congratulations to all those Milwaukee fans out there. Hope you will like it until the Lakers repeat once again as champions for their 18th title next year. At least that's what we hope because they are number two in the odds area right now in Vegas. But before we head on out, guys, I wanted to go ahead and have you guys talk about what you're up to this summer or what you're doing for your various outlets. We'll start with you, Spencer, at medium.com slash basketball dash university, the place you can go exclusively for the first look at the Lakers <laughs> fast break mock draft 4.0 because I got dissed last week by Lakerholics. But the Laker be, uh, is putting out their own mock uh, one uh, draft next week. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Well, I'm going to throw my. I'll throw it in a couple days. Don't worry. It's just a, they're, no, they're getting. Okay. The, we don't need. We don't need reruns. We, we'll we'll have it yeah, original. Yeah. I've been we're, giving we're you reruns. Original content. I, I gave you reruns on on 1.0 and 2.0 because I post them other places. <laughs> yeah. Other I'm posting well, it different now, places first. Jamie L. Rob and I are, are working on it, and uh, we'll have it, we'll have it released soon. Oh, that's scary because the draft is a week from Thursday. Just wanted to let you know. Well, you you got to have it done be by as that. Update as we can. Gather okay. as much information as we can. That's scary. Wait that's scary. Last minute. All right, all right. But Spencer, since I got dissed by Lakerholics.com, <laughs> what you got planned there outside of the Lakers fast breaks mock draft 4.0? Um. Well. I guess with like free agency and the draft approaching, I was thinking about writing about like team building philosophies because, you know, sometimes I know Laker Tom talks about three superstars and sometimes you have two superstars, but LeBron and AD being two superstars isn't the same to me as like Paul George and Kawhi because Paul George and Kawhi are, are what I would say like have overlapping skill sets while LeBron and AD are more of like a hand and glove fit. So there's there's many ways that teams are going to be built to win the title next year. And I guess I'll like preview free agency in the draft with that. And I'm sure it's, um, if not me, someone else will write about Giannis because some of the stories like about him in Greece or even him having to run to a game and getting picked up by a taxi driver because he couldn't afford to drive there. I mean, some of the stories that will come out would just be amazing. Absolutely. And I I'm, I congratulate him on the success and the MVP and the title and all that because, like Laker Tom said, he does deserve it after all the stuff he's gone through in his life. And I am happy for him. You know, that's two Attentacumpo brothers in a row. One wins a championship one year. Another wins a championship another. Actually, two won the championship this year. I don't know if his uh, brother was still – I think his brother was still in health and safety protocols. Yeah, he, was yeah, he wasn't at the game. Oh, yeah, right. I, I know he wasn't exactly a huge contributor anyways. But still, that's three Attentacumpo brothers as champions. So mm -hmm. very interesting to see. Maybe the you know, somebody's going to go out and try and get the fourth Attentacumpo brother as, you know, try and draft him in there and try to make sure that they've got the line, uh, you know, that to that next NBA championship. But L. Rob. You're also a great part of the Lakerholics.com crew. Have you been uh, checking on what's going on this year? What are you looking for for this summer? What do you What are you well, going to focus on for this summer? Actually, for, as a, for NBA, uh, besides your up impending marriage. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big plans there. But um, immediately NBA related, as a season ticket holder for the Pistons, I will be at their draft party. Oh. Uh, next thursday the 29th so i'm kind of looking forward to that that is well uh, let me ask you this yeah. 
Okay, there's been talk. Uh, Kate Cunningham is the consensus number one draft pick. I think that's pretty much goes without saying. There's been very few individuals out there that are projecting him as the number one. I've been projecting him as number one. But I don't see him as leaps and bounds better than, let's say, Jalen Green or even Evan Mobley, who I saw quite a bit at USC. So I want to hear your thoughts. Would you be surprised if they kept the pick, or would you be more surprised if they traded it for, let's say, the number two or three pick and something else? I would be more surprised uh, if they traded it because just the, the pressure from the fans, they want that number one pick. They want Cade. You know, it's just, it's a status thing. So, you know. Well, you what's the best option for the team? For the team? You know what? I have not seen enough of, of 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 the players to really give a strong evaluation. To tell you the truth, Gerald, I'm I, I mean I'm very uh, intrigued by Green's athleticism and his. He's going to be a twenty point scorer in the league. I'm going to tell you now. Yeah, and he looks like he could play great defense. He looks like he has the you know he can check all the boxes. Um, so you know that's. You know, you you go wrong on this, and you you can pick a you can pick an all star, and then you can pick maybe a guy who can be you know borderline, you know great you know all NBA perennial player. So it's tough. It's tough. You know, I, I remember Lakers, you know, had that pick between um, Dominique and Worthy and, and Terry Cummins, and you know that was a tough call. And and I think or the Luca trade. Yeah. As far as deal that's concerned, I mean, you could literally line up. And what what did they get out of it? They got Cam Reddish on the. It was basically Trey Young and Cam Reddish for Luka Doncic. And those are some of the things you could actually see in the first three picks right there. So, you know, you have Houston and you have Cleveland at number two and three. If either one wants to go ahead and throw that kind of offer out, would should Detroit? You know, should should yeah. Detroit be interested? Yes, they should definitely explore that. I mean, and Troy Weaver has a very good track record. I mean, he drafted, you know, he built that Oklahoma. He was key at building the Oklahoma City team, um, Westbrook, Durant, and Hart. And so he's got a good eye for talent. Uh, Ibaka, you know, he's he's drafted very well. So um, I trust him to make the right decision. But, yeah, you have to listen. You have to listen. They've, they've thrown that out there. That, hey, there's no guarantee we're taking the number one pick. We could move it. So... I think they will entertain it, but push come to shove, I think they'll go ahead and, and, and go ahead and get Cade. I mean, they got a decent young team and he would fit in with, with their squad. So um I don't see them rolling the dice. I, mean, I would be surprised if they did roll the dice. But if someone gave a, a good offer and gave, you know, gave them two and six or something like that, then you definitely have to look at that. Or like a first for next year, the number three pick and a first for next year. Let's say Cleveland does that. I wouldn't go down to three. Spencer, would you? What would you do? Let's say Cleveland or Houston throws out this year's pick and a number one. Because I like her talking about you a sec. What? Just want to real quickly. Would you? Would you trade for you know that number one pick? You're on me. Oh, you're good. Uh, honest. Okay. Well, I guess like I'm the same disclaimer with L. Rob, which that like I've been focusing on the NBA so much I haven't really watched the prospects too closely but it was I, I think I would just take Cade Cunningham honestly I, I'm in Houston right now I mean every time we lose a game every fan comments tank for Cade so I've been <laughs> like hoping for him to be a you know, Houston Rocket but uh, yeah, I guess I would take, take Cunningham. Evan Mobley and Jalen Green are two individuals that are out there that also could be very transformative, uh, depending on who you talk to. So if you do some uh, view, video on them, I'm interested to hear more thoughts what you guys have on both of those individuals. I love Jalen Suggs. I think he's going to be a winner. I'm not sure if he has the talent level as what we're seeing from Kate Cunningham or any of the top three, but to me, I think he's going to be that winner that's going to be at the forefront of the playoffs and championships in the not too distant future because I just think he has that it, that it factor. Uh, and I don't think that people should pass up on him if he hits there at number four or five. I do think people are looking at Scotty Barnes greatly 
So there's a lot of things going on in the draft. And even Jonathan Kaminga, if you really love his raw talent, a lot of things to go ahead and look there. But you can check out my mock draft, either the previous ones on Lakerholics.com and going forward, my 5.0, which will be there, but the 4.0, which would be on Basketball University. But Laker Tom, speaking of Lakerholics.com and your sensational art- articles that you put there, Jamie Sweet with his five things, what you got focused on for the near future at Lakerholics.com? Um, I've got an article I'm in the middle of that'll probably go out tomorrow. Um, and it's basically talking about why the Lakers, why the, why over half of the teams in the league this year were hard capped. And the reason is, is that while the hard cap, you know, gives you a firm number that you cannot go over regardless of circumstances, there's some benefits that you get from being hard capped. The first and most important one of which is that you can, accept players in a sign and trade from other teams, other teams, free agents. And right now the best players that are out there that the Lakers are interested in happen to be free agents, guys like Kyle Lowry and and Lonzo Ball. So you can't, you can't even pursue those people because we don't have cap space. So the only way that we could possibly get them would be to sign and trade, which would hard cap us. So there's still a lot of talk that the Lakers may be looking to hard cap. The second big advantage that you get, from hard capping is that you get to use the full MLE, which is $9.5 million. Uh, so you can sign a guy for a $30 million contract and, and, and you can, you can, there's only eight teams that have more than the MLE to offer to a free agent. So you're really, you're really getting a whole level and all of the teams that don't have the MLE or don't have, that aren't not, that aren't taxpayers. I'm sorry, that aren't, that aren't, uh, hard cap because of doing a sign and trade, the best that they can offer for the MLE is like $5.9 million. So there's a big difference there when you're going for uh, some of the players, that, you know, and especially at the point guard, there are a lot of point guards. There are more point guards available in free agency and firmly on the trade market than there are positions with a team. So it's going to be a game of musical chairs to figure out exactly what's happening. But the Lakers could very well decide that, let's say, let's say they try to get Malcolm Brogdon, but Brogdon's not going to be available. They can't trade for him. So what's the next choice that they have? Probably keeping Dennis Schroeder. So then you have to make a decision of how much more value would you get out of being able to sign and trade for Lowry, for example, or Lonzo Ball, and then use the MLE to sign you know, another player who's an impact player. So you get two new starters out of the situation. Um, and that may be the best solution that they find. So uh, anyway, the article is is basically that there are benefits to hard capping. And that's why most of the teams in the NBA, over half of them, were hard capped this year. And the expectations are that there's still going to be a lot of teams hard capped next year. Well, look for that at Lakerholics.com. Please be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. Plus, again, I do want to send a special thank you to our friends at the Hoop Heads Podcast Network, who have been a great part of the last portion of our season. We got on their HoopHeadsPod.com train, and we're looking forward to going ahead and continuing a relationship with them, plus all the sponsors who helped us during the course of the season. We want to thank you so much for doing so. But, guys... Just truly great working with each and every one of you during this season. I cannot thank you enough. Still say we should hang around for some good stuff. Let's say let's get together on Sunday if that's okay. See what we can still do to talk about the Lakers because draft time is coming up by the end of the week at, on that week. So it's coming up a week from Thursday now. So let's go ahead and talk about Sunday what the Lakers might be doing the draft if they're going to trade it, some variable options because – if you look at my latest mock draft, that'll be on Spencer Young's site, Basketball University, I will tell you right now, the Lakers don't have maybe the opportunity to go ahead and draft the individual we were thinking they were going to draft for reasons why. And I'll expl- I explain that in that mock draft. So want to go ahead and make sure you mention that to everybody out there that if you can, please go ahead and support the great Lakerholics.com. Support Spencer's great site, medium.com slash basketball-university. Also want to make sure you you go ahead and support all the great shows at hoopheadspod.com. 
Well, guys, once again, the Milwaukee Bucks are the NBA champions for now. Till the Lakers regain the throne in 2022. We're going to think positive going forward. Do want to thank everybody for watching and listening. Once again, we will see you on Monday then. If you're listening, we're going to go ahead and tape the show on Sunday night. So hopefully be part of that as well. But again, there will be many more episodes to come this summer right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.